Hi and welcome. I'm Lisa. Thanks for joining me here for another card video on YouTube and my blog. Today I'm sharing several cards and I'm going to be using a faux watercolor technique. I'm doing some ink smushing and I'm going to be doing both of these using a stamping tool. To get us started, I'm going to be using Simon Says Comb Building Set. Not 100% sure this is still available. If it is, I'll link it with the rest of the products. Also using Simon Says Birthday Messages Sentiment Set. So I have some Bristol Smooth paper laid down on my stamping tool. I've already positioned my stamp. I have a watercolor brush right here with some water available. I'm using Distress Inks in the color Spun Sugar and Picked Raspberry. I'm going to start by stamping the Spun Sugar and I'm going to stamp that directly onto our Bristol Smooth paper. I'm going to come in with the Picked Raspberry next and I'm going to use just the edge of the pad to add a small bit of the ink onto the stamp. You don't want to put ink on the whole stamp for this. So grab your brush, add some water to your stamp and then close the lid, allowing the water and the ink to play together. Once you do that and lift the lid, you have your faux watercolor look. Now you can leave it and let it dry like that, or if you want to play around with the ink a little bit and move it around, that's completely up to you. Now this is the process that I use for all of the ice cream scoops and the cone. So I'm gonna fast forward through this part and then we're going to pick back up to stamp our sentiments. So real quick, I'm using Squeezed Lemonade, Spice Marmalade, Antique Linen, and Walnut Stain for my other colors of Distress Inks. And this technique is just such a fun thing to do. Now for my sentiment, I wanted to use this round sentiment, but I didn't want to stamp over the scoop there and I also didn't want to stamp over the cone on the this one here so I cut my stamp I know some of you are opposed to that and I understand at first I was too but I just got over myself and went with it and I'm actually glad I did because it really does give me um, more options for my stamps so I went ahead and stamped happy birthday to you around these. I love the way these look. No, nope, we didn't do any masking on these. We just let it be what it is and stamped the cone right over the uh, ice cream scoop. Now I want to create some fun backgrounds for our stamps. And I'm going to be using uh, watercolor paper for this, but I'm adding some shims because I'm going to be using the lid to my Misty to do some ink smushing. So I don't want to put too much pressure on my lid. So I shim my watercolor paper up so that when my lid's closing, it's hitting directly on my watercolor paper. Now I'm going to come in and add some water using this big watercolor brush. And then I'm going to just go ahead and ink smush my ink straight onto my lid. And close the lid and let that water and ink just kind of move around. I'm going to go back in with this also and add antique linen to the top for like a vanilla look. And then on the bottom I'm going to put walnut stain for a chocolate look. So this is such a fun way to uh, create backgrounds for your stamps and it's really quick. And if you're already stamping and you have everything right there at your hands, it's just real easy. It's not to me as messy as laying it down on your glass mat, having to move everything, clean it all up. You just do it right here. It's so much quicker. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through this process too and then we'll pick back up to do some embossing with an embossing folder and a little bit of sanding and I'm going to add some um, shimmer to this by creating my own shimmer spray with Perfect Pearl. So I took these to the die cut machine and I cut them out using Hero Arts rectangle nesting dies and then I ran them through with an embossing folder. Now I use this embossing folder because the pattern on it reminds me of a waffle cone. So I, I absolutely love the way these turned out. I did take a piece of sandpaper and sanded those lightly just to help that pattern stand out a little bit more. You don't want to go hard with this. You want to go really light. 
Um, any sandpaper you have on hand will work. You can use a fingernail file. You can use sanding blocks from your big home improvement box stores. How, whatever you have that'll you know allow you to sand down a little bit works. So the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and add some shimmer to these by creating my own shimmer spray. I'm going to be using Perfect Pearls and I'm using a mini mister. Now these are just tiny little mister bottles from Ranger. They're perfect for creating your own misting sprays or like your pearlized sprays and um, you can use them with inks, just about anything you want, alcohol, whatever. So I'm going to add some perfect pearls to the little mini mister and I'm using just a little pipette because I don't have a small craft spoon right now and I'm just using that to get the uh, perfect pearls into the mini mister and then I'm going to add some water to these if you ever happen to you know just use whatever you have on hand and it happens to be one of these little pipettes just uh, be careful because you saw how when I laid it down there was still powder inside of it and it's kind of flung out no big deal I just wiped it up but just a heads up on that so just go ahead and add some water to your mini misters and then you're going to give these a good shake after you close them up now I'm not the first person to ever create shimmer sprays by no means. You've probably seen a number of crafters do this, but I just thought it would be fun to show somebody who hasn't seen it how to do it. Um, maybe you're not familiar with Perfect Pearls. This is a fun way to get more out of your Perfect Pearls. So if you ever wanted to try them but wasn't sure because you didn't know how much use you would get out of them, this is a great way to get an extra use out of those perfect pearls. Now I want to show you the shimmer on these once they dry. So I'm going to dry them with a heat gun and then I'm going to show you how much shimmer this adds. So you can see that it adds so much shimmer to your cards. I love the look of it. It's very subtle. It's so pretty though. So here you'll get an idea of what our cards are going to look like when they're done. So for this next card, I'm going to do a stamped background for it. I want to do something a little bit different with it. I'm going to use the sentiments from the Simon Says Stamp Birthday Messages stamp set. And I'm just grabbing three different stamps out of there. And I'm going to use the Distress inks that I used to do the faux watercolor. And I'm using the Picked Raspberry, Squeezed Lemonade, and the Spiced Marmalade for this. And I'm just going to randomly stamp these all over this card base. No rhyme or reason to what I'm doing. I just put them on a block and start stamping. And wherever my hand lands, that's where it's going to get stamped. So I'm going to fast forward through this part so that we can start wrapping this video up. Okay, so I'm using some Moonshine Sequin from Simon Says Stamp along with some Ranger Glossy Accents. I've attached our backgrounds to four and a quarter by five and a half inch top fold, 110 pound Luna cardstock uh, for my card bases. And I use 3D mounting foam to pop up our faux watercolored images. I'm going to go ahead and start placing these sequins. I do want to say if anybody has a secret formula for where to place sequins, by all means, please leave it in the comments below. Another thing is if you're going to try the inks machine with your stamping tool, by all means, I only recommend the Distress inks at this point because I've never tried any other inks with it and I'm not sure if it'll stain your uh, stamping tool or not. So I only recommend the Distress inks for that technique at this point. Who knows, maybe later I'll try something different. Now, I also wanted to let you know that I have tried a new glue and I'm testing it at this point. I want to make sure that it's going to hold our sequins and you know, don't, they don't fall off or whatever and um, it's crystal clear glue I, I don't want to share the brand and all of that information just yet but watch the next video and if I find that it is worthy then I will share the brand and where you can purchase this uh, crystal clear glue from 
who knows, maybe we'll be able to use it with vellum or acetate. You just never know. I haven't tested all of that yet. I've only tried it with the sequins, and I'm trying it on vellum and on cardstock. Okay, so that bit of information is out. The other thing I wanted to say was if you could hit the subscribe button and maybe click the bell so the next time a video comes available for me, you'll be notified. Also, you can find me on Facebook and on Instagram. So my blog is lisamensingblogspot.com. I also have a website if you guys ever want to check it out. It's lisamensing.com. I have a lot of fun information over there. I also have um, some inspiration boards, some color palettes that I've created myself in case anybody's interested. So here we are. We finished off our cards. We've done some inks machines, some dry embossing, some so water coloring, we've just done it all today. You just know how much I appreciate every one of you. And until next time, my friends, keep crafting.